induction motor torque formulas. So on page 56 of the handbook, we've got this formula right here. And on page 52, we've got this formula down here. Let me just take a look at my notes. Um, first of all, what is lowercase p? What is this guy right here? Now let's just zoom in. Is that too much? No, that's nice. That's, yeah, number of poles. So p is just number of poles, nothing new by now, right? How many poles in a pole pair? Who can answer in the chat? How many poles in a pole pair? Two, good job, excellent. All right, what is p sub r? What is p sub r? Yeah, rotor power, good job, Patricia. Rotor power, also known as, you can give me the other name that's common to see, air gap, Jerome, good job. A lot of times you'll see P lowercase ag or sub ag for P air gap. Uh, and then down here, everyone knows that F is just frequency, of course. And uh, ooh, I'm on the wrong page on my notes down here that I derived last night. Great, so we're gonna start with this formula right here. Go ahead and write this down right here. So this formula we're probably most used to working is mechanical torque equals about 9.55 times rotor power divided by synchronous speed. And of course, this is in the unit of what? This is just Newton meters. So these are the same two formulas left and right, right? How do we get there, right? Just don't take my word for it. Let's prove it, right? Um, so the first thing is, let's define synchronous speed. Who remembers, what's the formula for synchronous speed from frequency and poles off the top of your head? This is a really simple formula that doesn't take much to remember after you've worked it a couple of times. And if you're not sure, it's easy to plug a couple of values until you get, you know, 1800 RPM, the synchronous speed values that you're seeing. Yeah, 120 F over P. Good job, everybody. All right, what are my units for synchronous speed? It's RPM, right? If I were to show RPM as a unit, how could I show that as a unit? What does per mean? Fraction, right? So RPM is really revolutions, or I'm just gonna say rev for short, revolu revolutions per, right, divide minute. Next, um, we wanna convert from synchronous speed in revolution per minute to we wanna go to synchronous speed as omega s in the unit of radians per second. Uh, just like maybe angular velocity and power electronics when you have uh, two pi f, very similar. In other words, how do we find out synchronous speed instead of RPMs, we wanna know it in radians per second. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna play with the units and you'll see me do this a lot, uh, especially in lighting engineering, but uh, units, when you can cancel them out to get the units that you want, it makes things really simple. Uh, this is also what I do in demand calculations or when we're calculating costs of electrical billing, really helps to not have to worry about memorizing formulas. You just make things cancel. So for example, um, WS equals 120F over P revolutions per minute. The first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get rid of the revolutions on top. So I'm gonna multiply by a fraction. I'm gonna put revolutions on bottom and I'm gonna play, I wanna to get to radians. So I'm gonna replace it with radians on top. Who can tell me in the chat, how many radians are there in one revolution? What number goes here? And if you're not sure, think of a circle, right? There's 360 degrees in a circle, or we can say there's how many radians in a circle in one entire revolution? Yeah, two pi. So that's our conversion factor. So if I multiply that through, revolutions on bottom cancels with revolutions on top, and we're left with the radians on top. Next, I want to get rid of minutes and I want to go to per seconds. So I'm going to multiply by another fraction, this time with minutes on top, so my minutes cancel, seconds on bottom, so I've got per second. This is an easy one. Um, how many seconds are there in one minute? How many, and you can think of it in terms of how many minutes are there in, in one second or how many seconds are there in one minute. But the easiest way is in one minute, we know, yeah, we got 60 seconds. So let's see, that's gonna cancel a minute on top, minute on bottom, and I'm left with just seconds on top. So if I multiply this through, I'll be in the units of radians per seconds. See how easy that was? All right, um, so first thing is I, I was, I'm just going to kind of regroup this so it's easier to see. I'm gonna say uh, WS, our angular synchronous speed, there we go, is let's see, 120 times F over P, 
let's extend this times uh, from left to right on top. You can think of this as all one fraction, right? So times here's two pi. Then on bottom, I already have my P, my poles. All I have is 60, right? Times 60. And this is radians per second. All right, um, what else? We can show this a couple of different ways, right? Notice that here is an S, right? So I can say that angular synchronous speed is really NS times two pi over 60, right? That's one way to do it by just grouping NS. I can also say that, let's see, um, if I clean this up entirely, what do we get? What is um, 120 times two divided by 60? If I just want, oh, did I lose my, no, there's my F. So if I've got, let's see, pi and F on top, we're gonna keep number of poles on bottom. So I just want 120 times two over 60. 120 times two over 60, is the calculator working? Is going to be four. So I've got four on top. So here is our angular synchronous speed in radians per second. It's just four pi f over p. Um, so now let's look Let's look over here. Oh, um, one more thing. We can simplify this one step further. If you just want to convert between WS and NS, we can change this. What's two divided by 60? I'm just going to make some room here. Two divided by 60 is just what? One over 30, right? So this is the same as NS times pi over 30, right? So you can use this if you just want to convert back and forth between WS and NS if you ever need to. Um, and you don't have to memorize this. You can just play with the units. But here, we're going to plug this into this formula right here. So I'm going to erase all of this right here. Make some room. Does anyone see where WS is in this formula? Look at this. 4 pi F divided by P. I've got 4 pi F with P on top. Everyone see what this is? This is really just what? This is just one over WS. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So I've got torque, mechanical torque equals rotor power divided by WS, right? Okay. Uh, next, let's plug in WS, but look, we're trying to get to here, right? I'm trying to prove that this equals this. So I wanna get from WS to NS. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in this right here, okay, for WS, right? In other words, I said WS is equal to NS times pi divided by 30. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in for WS. So now I have mechanical torque equals PR. I've got 30 on bottom. When I plug it in, it's gonna to go to the top, right? So PR times 30, and then remember, we're dividing by WS, so we're gonna have NS times pi on the bottom of this fraction. Does everybody see that? Go ahead, grab your calculator and tell me what is 30 divided by pi approximately? I wanna know what is 30 divided by pi? So let's see, my calculator, 30, divided by pi, and I know it's gonna probably give me a fraction. Oh, no, perfect. It is about what? It's about nine point, what if I round it to two decimal places? It's what? It's 9.55, 9 9.55. And of course, this is Newton meters. So this formula that you see in the handbook that uses number of poles times rotor power divided by four pi times frequency, it's the same formula that we've been using all along for our torque, in Newton meters. Pretty cool, huh? So this form is nothing new. It's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, it's just a different way of representing this. And uh, the only thing I can think of is sometimes you're already given NS. So instead, there might be some extra steps of calculating maybe poles. Maybe you know NS, you know the frequency, but you don't know, know the number of poles. So you might have to use NS to calculate the number of poles, and then you can use this formula. That's really about all I can think of. 
Um, yeah, when I first saw this, it's, you know, I'll scratch my head. I've actually never seen this before. So I just kind of played around with it. Just to kind of make sense of it. And yeah, the nice thing is it's exactly the same. All right. The next formula, look at page. If you have your reference open page 52, uh, whoever made this formula, I guess they were lazy and they just wanted to type it out. Uh, watch out for this right here. That's the same thing as like a fraction, right? But this formula, guess what? It's the same thing as this up here. So we're going to show the units. Another thing is be really careful. I'm really not a fan of when textbooks or authors do this because this looks like power times KW, right? What they're saying is, hey, this is real power in the unit of KW. This is torque in the unit of Newton meters. This is speed in the unit of RPMs. Uh, it's really more common to see units either just next to it like this, but a lot of times you'll see brackets maybe like this. Again, I'm not sure if they copied this from somewhere else. I've never seen this before. Just be careful that you realize this is just the units, right? These parentheses. All right, so let's go ahead and write it first. Let's say P K W equals, I'm going to show the fraction. So it's easier to work with P in units of K W equals torque in the unit of Newton meters, uh, times N in the unit of RPMs divided by nine, five, four, nine. Let's go ahead and rearrange this and solve for torque. So how do we solve for torque? We're going to move this to the other side next to P, then we're gonna divide by N. So T in Newton meters equals 9549 times power in the unit of KW divided by N in the unit of RPM. All right, next, um, let's get rid of this P and KW. I just want to go to P in terms of Watts. So how do I rewrite this to just show P in Watts? How do we do that? Can I divide by a thousand, right? P divided by a thousand or my number of Watts divided by a thousand is the same as KW, right? So go ahead in your calculator, what's 9,549 divided by 1,000? 9,549 divided by 1,000, uh, you can really just move the decimal places, right? So if I want to divide by 1,000, I'm going to turn this comma into a period. See what that looks like? I'm going to zoom out so we can look at both formulas. Look at the formula on the first page. Look at that, 9.55 times PM divided by N. See that? This formula is the same thing as mechanical torque in Newton meters equals 9.55, right? It's just a rounded decimal times, what power is this right here? divided by N in Newton meters. It's not a rotor power like before. It's going to be our mechanical output power, which is just about the same thing as P out, right? So you notice how these two formulas in the reference handbook, it's the same formulas that we've been working with all along. Let's see, I see a good comment from Mo that a lot of people um, are commenting on, so let me make sure I read it. Uh, Mo said, guys, just, FYI, I know some of you are still wondering, will we have to solve problems that have no reference in the handbook, like substation buses, breakers, et cetera? I was reading an NCS website that they'll give you any information in the problem like a table. Yep, perfect. Yeah, they've stated a couple of times that uh, any, any material that you might need to solve it, they should be including it in the problem. Now, does that mean they're gonna, does that mean every single problem is gonna have supplemental uh, material? Probably not, but anything that's really far stretching that you normally have to really dig for in a reference book. Yeah, hopefully we can expect that it will be provided. All right, um, any questions on these two formulas? And you'll notice there isn't a formula for foot pounds anymore. Uh, instead we'll be converting. And I, I still think it's safe to assume that they're gonna ask for answers in foot pounds because that's the imperial, uh, the imperial uh, units. Only thing to be careful of here is just remember that this P, think of this as your P out, right? It's gonna be your output power. 
not your rotor power like we use in the other formula. It's either rotor power and synchronous speed or uh, output power and actual rotor speed.